Back in 2020, I had this idea to train a machine learning program that would learn how to play Pokemon Red. Unfortunately, I was no good at coding, and the little Python that I remembered from college was insufficient to make any real progress. And then, this happened. Peter's video was not only brought a bunch of attention to the concept, but also inspired me to dust off my old project with newfound skills and see if I could build something awesome. Now, while I absolutely pushed to the last few weeks because of Peter's video, I want to call out that this video will be quite different along with the solution that I built. Peter has clearly more understanding of machine learning than I do, and I didn't train my AI, my AI for 50 hours, but it took some novel approaches that are sure to be interesting. I highly recommend that you go check out his video because it's incredibly well made. And as a disclaimer, I did not use any of Peter's code, mostly because I didn't understand it. So let me introduce you to Prey, or Pokemon Red AI, as in, I pray this will work. My vision for Prey was simple. I wanted to train a system to slowly understand and explore Pokemon Red, while building stronger and stronger strategies for navigating and battling. I hope to build something that approaches the game with as much novelty as I did over 20 years ago. Now, when I play a Pokemon game, I have goals in mind to train my Pokemon, defeat all eight gyms, and take on the Elite Four as efficiently as possible. That's not how I played Pokemon at age seven. I cherished the experience of exploring new areas and talking to the NPCs. I loved encountering and catching new Pokemon. And hopefully, we'll rediscover some of this magic. In 2020, I intended to use screenshots of the UI, as Peter did, and built my first vision based off of that concept. Peter's video highlights just how complex this problem is. Can you imagine storing thousands, if not tens of thousands of screenshots, vectorizing them and checking against them at every point in time? Now, thanks to Peter, I recognize the benefit of Pyboy, which not only could take screenshots, but also manage inputs into the game for me. Unlike my normal self, I actually started to dive into the documentation, and I found some juicy secrets, but we'll get to those. Conceptually, the implementation of reinforcement learning here is simple. At every point in time, the program evaluates its current state, checks to see if that state has occurred before, then makes a decision on where to move based on history. If something good happens, then it's rewarded. If something doesn't happen, then it's either punished or not rewarded at all. So what were those hidden items in the documentation? First, I found background data. This is information stored in memory about the map that your character is exploring. Then, I found sprite data. This tells you what sprites are currently appearing on screen, with four sprite objects for every character. Finally, I found window data, which describes any windows or menus appearing, like the start menu or even battle menus. And oh boy, was I excited for the background data. Instead of just taking screenshots, I can now monitor changes in the background data, and if it changes, that's where I give the reward, right? Yeah, um, I don't know what all this means. It's really just a mess of numbers. When I visualize it, you know, this kind of looks like Oak's Lab, and these are the flowers, right? But what's all this stuff? And when I move, the background data doesn't usually change, except for when I go way over here. It appears that the game is preloading a whole bunch of background data and memory based on the character's location. And as far as the rest, I have a suspicion that it's all loaded in jumbled like this video from Retro Game Mechanics Explained shows the way that ba battle sprites were loaded in. So background data, unless I can parse it somehow, seems a little bit like a red herring. And while sprite data and window data will prove useful in some contexts, they don't solve the one core problem of exploration. Oh, but what's this? Coordinates? Just as our brains have a visual understanding of the world, we also have a spatial understanding of the world. Close your eyes or walk around the house in the nighttime and you'll be able to navigate it pretty well. Our body's true sixth sense is proprioception, or a sense of position and motion. It takes in inputs from receptors and muscles, tendons and joints, along with, funnily enough, our inner ear. The body recognizes the degree of stretch of muscles, the angles of joints, and the amount of tension in our tendons, while the inner ear can sense when you are rotated. It's really cool stuff. And it's also my excuse for why coordinates are a valid option for prey. The game memory contains three variables that represent the X, Y, and map coordinates that your character is currently in. It's one of the reasons why the teleport glitch is even possible. And it's also substantially simpler than the vectorized image, along with a 32 by 32 tile map of background data that I tried to use. That drastically reduces the computational program every time your character navigates to a new square. So, without further ado, 
Let's see the results. After I mention that if you like this video, please get subscribed for more updates in the future. While this is my first software focused video, I'll leave a link in my uh, description to my project playlists where I have a bunch of cool hardware focused projects. Well, I prefer this over watching grass grow. Now, as I let the program learn, I built this cool interactive UI, which allows me to see all the squares that the game has explored, along with the respective weights to determine which direction the character will move once landing on them. It's awesome to see new maps appear and grow, almost like the AI's a cartographer, but it's going to take some time. The point of reinforcement learning is slowly tuning a reward system that will drive the most effective results. Currently, Prey only uses an intrinsic reward system. It does not earn any reward from winning battles, catching Pokemon, or avoiding blacking out. Instead, the reward comes from exploration. Technically, those extrinsic goals will slowly be achieved through this intrinsic reward system, but it will take time. Every single run of Prey is currently independent. I wanted it to learn from scratch. And the most successful run was when I left the game on overnight and managed to choose a Charmander, explore its way to Viridian City, pick up Oak's parcel, and then faint on Route 22, only to end up back in Pallet Town. In order to avoid dead ends, the AI slowly turns into a random walk when the same old route keeps on leading it into a dead end, which is great, but random walks are notably difficult to find success. Thankfully, there are so many ways to take prey from here. I'd like to add on more intrinsic rewards, such as that that we can glean from window data and sprite data, and see what reward systems have the best achievement of extrinsic goals. Obviously, the first major landmark would be for, to make it through Viridian Forest and defeat Brock, but I'd love to see what else is possible, and I have a ton of ideas for very cool experiments. I'd love to hear yours as well. While this is a project I feel like I need to tackle myself, I'd love to hear your ideas on where I should take it. If there is enough interest, I will post a more technical video on a second channel, so let me know if you personally would be excited to see that. Thank you for watching InnoISO, and I hope to see you again shortly.